Hello, this is Bob Browner, and I uh, have enough questions lately about uh, what's going on with uh, respiratory viruses in China and everything else. So I decided to record another update, uh, kind of trying to decide, you know, discuss, you know, what is the new normal for respiratory viruses we should be looking at? What things could you do to minimize your risk? And will China bring a Pi variant, uh, which I think is a possibility, of course. Uh, the CDC, of course, announcing that they're going to start testing people for uh, Chinese passengers coming in from China, but I, I don't think that's really going to make a difference by itself. Uh, there's a great podcast, for, uh, great update from Caitlin Gentilino. I'll mention just a minute about that. So uh, respiratory viruses, essentially we've got three major ones that kill 10,000 plus Americans every year now. Uh, RSV, we had a big uh, surge of that, which uh, uh, thankfully looks to be subsiding now. Uh, people always hear about it causing uh, infections in kids. That causes a lot of hospitalizations in kids, but not many deaths, but actually kills quite a few elderly, somewhere in the range of 10 to 15,000 a year uh, every winter, but people often are unaware of that. That's not a new thing, actually. Influenza. We had a big surge uh, up, up, uh, two weeks ago, and then one of my frustrations, the CDC, you see that the last update is from December 17th, two weeks ago. Uh, why have we not made our data more uh, timely through the COVID pandemic? I think it's one of our biggest failings is that we have not gotten better health data. Uh, this should be more timely, and we shouldn't have to wait two weeks for that. Uh, Nebraska, we do have a little more timely data with that, thankfully, although even this, uh, our own respiratory virus dashboard sometimes is seven to 10 days out of date, but here we are, you know, six, five, six days ago, uh, showing that COVID or influenza does seem to be dropping, which is good. Uh, this is probably uh, partly that uh, what you're seeing is probably Thanksgiving week, you get a, re get a surge of cases, then it starts dropping, but after the Christmas holidays, I think we may see another surge, and this has been typical, and we've seen this uh, through COVID, and then after holidays and everybody travels and gets together, this is uh, where things spread. Same with COVID here. And so COVID, you know, we had a, a bit of a surge here. You know, we got past the Omicron surge back here, late summer surge, uh, after Thanksgiving surge. Uh, we may end up with another one after the Christmas holidays. Uh, we'll see what happens. So uh, one way is to put these in, things in perspectives. And I think the most, you know, the black and white comparison is how many people die. And so here is COVID, uh, a bad flu year, RSV versus car wrecks and gun violence. And what you see here is that, you know, we're losing about 345 people a day annualized, that's about 125,000 people compared to a, a flu years, which range from 12 to 52,000 in a bad year, car wrecks, you know, in the 40, 50,000, along with gun violence and RSV deaths, 10 to 15,000. COVID is still the third leasing cause of death in the United States. So is the pandemic really over? I guess I wouldn't say so. I think it's uh, controllable at this point, but it's not over uh, because it's killing more people than car wrecks, gun violence, and an RSV uh, per year combined. So it's not over, but, you know, and it could be more manageable, but unfortunately we just don't have people doing the things that could really minimize their risks. So, you know, uh, early on in the pandemic, we heard people saying, oh, oh those people are going to quote die anyway. Well, you know, we've had ways to account for this for decades now. So we have mortality statistics going back for decades and we've known how many people are going to quote die anyway. We track that and have tracked that for like I say, decades. Uh, we know that every winter deaths go up, typically due to RSV and influenza. We, we count for that basically, basically. Sometimes we have a bad flu year, and here over here graphically, this is what a bad flu year looks like. And of course, here was our first COVID surge, followed by the next COVID surge because, you know, people said, oh, in the South, we're saying, oh, it's a seasonal virus. We'll just open up, you know, not wear any masks or anything over the summer and get together. And of course, we had a little surge after that. Then we had the alpha surge and the election near madness in 2020, where we killed off lots and lots of Americans, almost half a million through these here as well. And everybody, some people tried to claim, oh, we're done, we're past it, nothing to worry about. Then we had the Delta surge, followed by the Omicron surge, which killed another half a million Americans. And here we are now, still smoldering around, still having a number of deaths worse than a bad flu year, actually. And unfortunately, all of this is avoidable. This doesn't have to happen, mostly a combination of people not vaccinating and not taking Paxlovid like they should do, should be. This should not be a problem anymore, but it is due to misinformation and people making bad decisions, unfortunately. So uh, one th way to look at things is to say, well, how did we do across the United States? And unfortunately, the United States did not do very well compared to other countries. Uh, but within the United States, it's an amazing amount of variation, a threefold variation of mortality uh, with, you know, Arizona taking the, the, the award for worst management in, in the entire country. But a lot of countries and not not just blue states, but even red states like Utah, for example, actually doing well in Alaska. Alaska, pretty isolated. So you can that not too surprising there. Uh, but you have some states doing pretty well, including Nebraska, actually, all, all, overall. But actually, Nebraska it varies depending on where you live in Nebraska.
So here's a, here's the literally the raw numbers, and I've put links to the place where you can literally reproduce this graph yourself if you would like to. Uh, so this is all open data that's available to anybody, honestly. Nebraska, Lincoln had the lowest mortality rate of anybody around us, and if we were a state, we would have been the number three state in the country as far as how well we managed pandemic. And we got our kids back to school on a timely basis, by the way, I might add. Uh, if we had not done what we did in Lincoln, uh, so the people claiming, oh, Lincoln did too much, making people wear masks, and et cetera. Well, you know, if we hadn't done that, we'd have anywhere from 500 to 1,000 more deaths if we'd done what everybody else did. Who do you think those 500 to, to 1,000 people in Lincoln should have been that should have died to spare you the inconvenience of wearing a mask? And so uh, masking and vaccination made a huge impact. And if done appropriately, we could have saved so many more lives. And we could be at the point now where we wouldn't have so many dead people. Uh, graphically, here's kind of how it looks in comparison. Uh, obviously, Lincoln Lancaster County jumping out a little bit. Bellevue Sarpy County did almost as well. They didn't do as much as us, but they're a much younger population, so they should have a lower mortality rate than us, not a higher mortality rate, mortality rate than us. And so had Lincoln uh, been a state, Lincoln would have done better than every state in the country except for Vermont and Hawaii, actually. Well, Hawaii being so isolated, that's pretty easy, but Vermont was kind of hard. But to be in the middle of the country like, like we were and do as well, I think uh, we deserve some credit here in Lincoln for doing it the right way. Uh, so what could we do to minimize our risk? I'd say mask when needed. I don't wear a mask uh, hardly at all, except for a couple situations, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, vaccination, we need to start vaccinating appropriately. Unfortunately, there's too much misinformation and way underutilized in medications when appropriate. So, you know, have to versus sure do versus what would I do? Well, you know, I wear a mask at the airport at arrival until I hit cruising altitude. Uh, I might start wearing it even more at cruising altitude, given what's happened in China. Um, my next plane flight I take, uh, I mask at a healthcare facility. I think there may be a time when we will mask in in schools, although right now I don't think there's the need or a political will at this point. And of course, vaccinate yourself. So uh, here's me literally traveling, and I, and I travel quite a bit, actually. This is actually me in Japan uh, at the end of November when I went to visit my daughter and my son-in-law. Uh, the Japanese are still wearing masks pretty much everywhere, actually, uh, even outdoors, which I think maybe is a little excessive. But you know what? It's hard to argue with our mortality rates. They had hardly any excess mortality compared to us. Uh, they had some, but not very much, actually. They masked appropriately. They vaccinated. It took them a while to get their vaccination started, but once they started, boy, did they vaccinate everybody. And so when I'm in the airport or in crowded places, this is actually, uh, if I remember correctly, the Kyoto uh, station, where it's just you know, the amazing amounts of people in here. We have no concept of how many people is crowded. Uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, on a Cornhusker game day, doesn't touch Kyoto Station or Namba in Osaka uh, on Tuesday night at 10 p.m., basically. But I will take my mask off at cruising altitude, and I open the vent all the way. Uh, if somebody's coughing near me, I'll put my mask back on. But we're also wear a good mask. A mat, I would not use cloth masks anymore. You should, minimum, a surgical mask like this lady, I use a KF94 because it fits my face better, or a KF95 would also work depending on your face and what fits with you. Uh, again, vaccination rates. So Lincoln has the highest uh, vaccination rates in the state. Uh, our older than 65 population, we were for a while, we were the only county that had more than half of our elderly vaccinated with the bivalent booster, but thankfully Douglas County and Sarpy County have joined us. I've uh, put links uh, to this as well, so if you want to go to the notes section, you can look at this and see what uh, everybody, every county's vaccination rates are if you're interested. Uh, another way thing I think that demonstrates vaccination effectiveness is the Bryan Medical Center's dashboard. So kudos to them for putting, continuing to put this up there. You can see all the people who are in the hospital and their vaccination status. And despite more than half of the people in Lincoln Lancaster County having the booster, almost all the people in the hospital are the people who are not up to date. There's a few who are, but most of these people are high risk, people with cancer, uh, immune system problems, things like that. And almost all the younger people that are in the hospital, it's because they are not adequately vaccinated. Thankfully, it's not like early in the pandemic. Very few of these people are on the ventilator in the ICU anymore. They're needing supplemental oxygen, but that's unneeded cost. You know, and who does? I mean, I got better things to do than waste my time in a hospital, too. So just get your vaccine. Uh, keep in mind the COVID risk pyramid. Yes, the vaccine is not 100% effective against mild infections or asymptomatic infections, but it is very 80 to 90% effective against hospitalizations, deaths, and also very effective against preventing long COVID as well. People are missing the long-term disability costs of COVID are going to be huge, uh, and that's uh, just coming out now. So get your vaccine because it reduces your mortality dramatically. Uh, basically, uh, so, you know, mask when needed, not everywhere, but, but when you're needed. You stay up to date on your vaccinations, including your flu shot. The flu shot looks like a good match this year, about 50% reduction in hospitalizations. And medications, and big, the big one is Paxlovid uh, for, for people with COVID. 
Uh, we did work uh, in the Rask County Family Family Physicians. A couple of us, we uh, brought in doctors David Quimby and James Lawler uh, to basically review the evidence. And the evidence is just rock solid that more that people high risk should be getting Paxlovid. A lot of people are candidates. There's a few people who are not candidates for various reasons, for kidney issues, uh, Medicaid interactions. Well, those can often be dealt with, actually. So if you want to watch the video yourself, it's 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 geared toward clinicians. But you can go to there, type in the Vimeo address above, and type in the password COVID. And I've got a, li a link in the code uh, note section as well. These are two of Nebraska's leading infectious disease experts telling you what we really should be done. Uh, there's such a misnomer about, quote, Paxlovid rebound, which actually is not a thing. It's a meme that's per 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 perpetuated in, in, our, in our media, unfortunately. COVID has three distinct phases. There's acute viral phase where Paxlovid makes a big difference. There's an inflammatory phase that can happen with or without COVID. Even orange juice is followed by a quote, Paxlovid rebound, it's not due to Paxlovid, it's just the second phase of the infection. And it's actually less less likely in Paxlovid that you, that, infect, that inflammatory failures would put you in the hospital. And also the sodas are showing that Paxlovid also decreases the risk of long COVID. So you should take Cax Paxlovid if you are a candidate. Uh, the, out, the recommendations are out there. Please visit with your doctor if you're a high-risk patient have a plan to take COVID. So if you do go to home for Christmas and you do get Pax, get COVID, have a plan for how you're going to start in COVID, uh, Paxlovid within this first couple of days with a negative, with a positive test. Make a plan with your doctor. Uh, if you want to stay up to date, my still my favorite uh, places to stay up to date. One is uh, your local epidemiologist, Dr. Caitlin Gina. She has the best visuals out there. Uh, so I'd highly, if you really want to be up to date, I would not follow the national media on COVID. It's the reporting still is horrible, which which frustrates me. But she does a very good job linking to all the sources with graphics. And the best clinical uh, uh, update for me is Dr. Dan Griffin on TWIV. I listen to his every week. Uh, I really like his perspective on things. And this is a guy who travels all over the world. Great, great uh, uh, view on things. So Dr. Caitlin Gentilina did do today a thing on whether COVID in China was, is that going to give us the Pi variant? Well, it might. I mean, when you let her rip and uh, infect a billion people, yeah, that's a lot of opportunities for the virus to mutate. But to be quite honest with you, it's spreading every place else too. So yes, that new variant could come from China, probably more likely given the numbers, but it also could still come from the United States or the UK or South Africa or who knows where. Uh, so I guess, you know, biggest thing, just stay up to date on your vaccinations. If we get another surge, be willing to put that mask back on again. And if you're high risk, be willing to take Paxlovid or an alternative. That is the solution to this. So uh, we'll, we'll, you know, yes, it's nice. I guess it's a partial thing that, that we're going to start testing people coming from China. But honestly, I think we're at the point where, where we should be masking in, in the airport again. And I think testing by itself just isn't going to make big of a, a big enough difference. And you know, Dr. Caitlin generally actually goes through the math. It'll make a, maybe a 10% reduction, which you know, is a drop in the bucket, unfortunately. So living with COVID, essentially get your COVID bivalent booster, mask at the airport at this point, or if you're sick. And if you're high risk, talk to your doctor about a plan, Paxlovid or an alternative. So hopefully this is helpful to you. This is what I do for a living, uh, so you can verify who I am. I actually do have a pretty good idea what I'm talking about. Uh, we have some websites. The HealthyNebraska.org has a lot of those tableau visuals. But disclaimer, this is my opinions, not necessarily those of the organizations I work with and for. And hopefully this helps.